So, hey, I'm Dr. Annette, and I'm Dr. Annette, and I want to talk about the three stages of the ketogenic lifestyle with you today. There's a lot of confusion about the ketogenic diet and the ketogenic lifestyle, and a lot of people uh, just need a little extra information. So that's what we're here to talk about today. And um, I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm a board certified naturopathic doctor, and I um, have spent the last three years working on ketosis and talking to people about ketones and all those amazing things. So I just thought that I would come on today and share some things with you that I've learned over the course of the last three years. So welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're new, please say something. Let me know that you're here. If you um, are watching this on the replay, just type replay. Let me know where you're from and how long you have known about or been using, I'm trying to figure out where to put this video, but using uh, ketones so that we can uh, have a little conversation about that. So it looks like that did not work the way I thought it was going to work. So welcome, welcome. Sorry about that. I was distracted. So getting into a state of ketosis is the first stage in living a ketogenic lifestyle. So getting into ketosis requires that you deplete all of your glycogen stores out of your body, which means carbohydrates and sugars, all the glucose that comes in, and depleting your glycogen stores requires uh, fasting or staying away from food to some degree, or at least foods that make more sugar or more glucose, um, which can sometimes be a struggle for people, right? And also, moderate exercise helps get the glycogen out of your muscles, which is where it gets stored. So it gets stored in your liver and in your muscles. And the only way to get rid of it is to exercise or to fast or both or whatever. So um, this leads us into a conversation about fasting. So fasting, the word itself scares people a lot because uh, especially people that are older, like my age, they think of fasting as a process that is um, like when Mahatma Gandhi or whatever his name was, the Dalai Lama, somebody fasted years ago to prove a point, right? They would fast in order to um, get somebody to do something for them. That's not what we're talking about when we're talking about fasting. So if you've ever heard of someone fasting as a way to get somebody else to do something for them, that's not what we're talking about here. Because those people were doing like, you know, 180 day fasts and crazy things. And everybody was afraid that they were going to basically die because they were fasting for such a long period of time that it was actually making them sick. So that's not at all what we're talking about here. So please do not um, be freaked out by that at all. Um, so what we are talking about is fasting as a way of life, right? So if you're fasting as a way of life, all fasting means is literally fasting means the time between the last meal you ate. So you, do you know why breakfast is called breakfast? Is because you're breaking the fast. I know, it's just amazing, isn't it? It's so simple to think of it as breaking your fast. But that's really what you're doing. You're breaking your overnight fast by eating breakfast. And commonly, we have been taught in society that we should be eating meals, like three meals a day. We should be eating snacks. We should be doing all of these things. And most of the time, those meals and those snacks include so many carbohydrates that your body cannot burn off all of that sugar in a, in a day's time. But the problem with using sugar for energy is that your body gets so used to using it for energy that it cannot utilize fat stores for fuel. So you eat sugar, your body uses up the little bit of sugar that it can in a short period of time by raising insulin and forcing the sugar into the cells. You get some energy, sometimes amazing, like quick energy, but then it doesn't last very long. It just goes away. And then guess what? You need to eat again to get that feeling of euphoria back, right? Technically, I mean, they actually have proven that sugar actually 
treats like the brain reacts to sugar the same way that the brain reacts to heroin or cocaine. So that same level of high, that same addictive feeling happens when you eat sugar. And some people actually have that problem ooh, with sweets in general. So getting into ketosis can be a bit of a challenge for people. It can take two to six weeks and it can be a painstaking process because of the side effects that come when you try to break your carbohydrate addiction, detox the carbohydrates out of your body. So that's where people start talking about things like the keto flu and feeling bad and really bad carbohydrate cravings, things like that are what are associated with that time where your body is trying to figure out how to burn its own fat for fuel because it will hold on to that idea that it can get more sugar it will wait and wait and wait for more sugar. And while you're waiting and waiting and waiting for more sugar, guess what happens? You get cranky and you get hangry and you, you know, you suffer basically. And sometimes you suffer a lot. So as you're coming on, let me know where you're watching from. I love to say hi to you. So anyway, this whole process can be a struggle for people. Um, and then when you hear people talk about ketosis, you will also hear them talk about intermittent fasting, not just fasting in general. So intermittent fasting just means that you're taking a period of time throughout every day where you're not eating. So basically, you've been doing intermittent fasting your whole life. You just didn't know that you were doing it. So those days that you skip breakfast and wait to eat till lunch or maybe skip and wait to eat till dinner, those are the days where you're doing intermittent fasting. You just didn't know that it had a name. And a lot of people do intermittent fasting on a regular basis naturally because they just don't like to eat breakfast. And for a long time, people thought that if you didn't like to eat breakfast, it meant that you had a blood sugar problem and your, your body was trying to tell you something. But honestly, you're just not hungry because you're probably in a state of ketosis and you're just not hungry. You don't want to eat anything. So uh, now that we're getting better and better about understanding the body and how blood sugar and ketosis works, hey, Cheryl, um, we're learning in, in the medical society, we're learning all the time about how the human body works, right? Every time we think we have the human body figured out, we learn that we we didn't know everything and we're, we're starting to understand more about how the human body works. I mean, cavemen didn't have access to Belgian waffles, right? They, they didn't have access to all of those things and they didn't have access to strawberries and apples and those things all year around. They only had access to those things in the summertime when those things were available. So, hey, Cheryl, that's good. Intermittent fasting is a great way to combine um, a healthy way to stay in ketosis while doing a ketogenic lifestyle. It also allows you for some moderation in your ketogenic lifestyle as well. So, you know, it takes a little bit of time to get used to intermittent fasting. So if you're new to the ketogenic lifestyle, Take your time, work your way into it gently. There's no reason to just wake up tomorrow morning and decide, okay, I'm not eating anything today. That's not the idea that we're trying to get across when we're talking about intermittent fasting. So, but as you get to be keto adapted, which is phase two of the ketogenic lifestyle, keto adaptation comes as the keto flu starts to wear off. Your body is getting accustomed to not having glucose as a fuel source and it starts looking for fat to burn. So of course you're, you're providing your body more fats, more healthy fats to use as fuel because you're eating them, but your body also has stored fat. It doesn't matter how thin or fat, whatever you are, your body has fat. It always stores fat because it's an emergency fuel source that most people don't know how to get to. Most people's bodies don't know how to get to it. So when your body is done detoxifying all of those carbohydrates and glycogen stores out of your body, then it starts to switch over into a, a state of ketosis and you start to be keto adapted. So I wanna like debunk a myth right here because a lot of people think that if you don't eat some sort of carbohydrates every single day, that you will die because your body needs sugar to survive. This is not true. Your body does need sugar. Your brain especially needs sugar in the form of glucose or glycogen occasionally. But guess what? Your body can make all of the sugar it needs because it can break down proteins to make sugar. So don't worry about lowering your sugar intake, your carbohydrate intake, 
low enough to get into a state of ketosis because your body is not going to let things go awry. It's going to make sure that things are taken care of. I have like a hair dangling off me. It's tickling me. So don't worry about those things. If you've heard someone say that, if someone has told you that you are going to hurt yourself by not eating carbohydrates, that myth is completely incorrect. Completely incorrect. So if that's something that you've been told or something that you think um, is true, then um, you can do some research on that. But it's absolutely, absolutely not true. So depleting glycogen stores, depleting carbohydrates, fasting on carbohydrates. Like you can fast from a certain food group too. So fast your carbohydrates. Don't eat any carbohydrates. And your body will eventually learn how to be in a state of ketosis. The problem with that is, is sometimes you get the hangry, the keto flu, things like that. So the next thing you know, you're feeling really bad and your body is telling you, hey, dummy, eat some carbs. Because if you do, we'll feel amazing. Well, that amazing feeling is only going to last as long as it takes for your body to burn off that sugar. And then you're going to be back to feeling bad again, which is why everyone fails at a diet because you don't pick a lifestyle and stick to it. You fail at a diet because those carbohydrate cravings come back to get you. And if you're following a diet program that allows you to have carbohydrates on any level, all you're doing is going around and around and around and around. Because every time you eat those carbohydrates, your body goes right back to carbohydrate addiction. And the next thing you know, you're eating more carbohydrates and you cannot stop yourself because your body is like, give me more, give me more, give me more. So it's really, really important if you're going to do this, that you stick to it, get an accountability partner, find something to support the process, right? So everybody says that um, getting into a state of keto adaptation, you know, kind of brings on the keto flu. You can also use electrolytes. It's very important to have some calcium, magnesium, sodium, and potassium. People don't realize that potassium is such an important nutrient, but you're better off to not get it from a supplement. You're better to get it from food because foods have the proper balance. But even with saying that, you'd have to eat a lot of like spinach and leafy greens to get as much potassium as you need on a daily basis. So I typically recommend people take electrolytes every day. I like a brand called 40,000 volts from Trace Minerals. Um, you can get that on Amazon and that works really well. I also recommend you use sea salt on your food. Use sea salt, you can put it in your water. Um, you can add lemon to your water with a little sea salt. Lemon helps your body pH. It also helps because it has minerals in it as well. And um, lemon also, if you squeeze half a lemon in your water every day and drink it, it can also help with certain types of kidney stones, in case you didn't know that. And then what I do is ketone salts. I use a ketone product called Keto Max or Keto Nat that helps me get into a state of ketosis in 60 minutes and helps me stay there on a daily basis. I've never experienced the keto flu because I skipped that step by jumping right into my ketone salts and doing that. So I, I don't know what that's like and I hope I never find out because I've heard a lot of people say that it's not fun. So um, when you get into a state of ketosis, you usually know it. A lot of people like to test, actually um, there's test strips that you can use to see if you're in a state of ketosis. And a lot of people like to use these regularly to see this is what the bottle looks like. But let me tell you something. I know when I'm in ketosis because I'm not craving food. I'm not really hungry. My mood is elevated. My energy is high. My focus is on point. I feel like I can get everything done that I feel like getting done. And I don't struggle throughout the day with um, hunger pangs or anything like that. And the food that I eat, because I don't have cravings, I actually, believe it or not, make healthier food choices when I'm in a state of ketosis because I mentally know that I need to eat more vegetables, right? Everybody knows that. I need to eat foods that have nutrient-dense stuff in them. So when you know that and you're thinking about that and you're focused on that and you're in a state of ketosis, you it makes it so much easier to actually choose to eat healthier foods because that craving that little voice in the back of your head that tells you to eat something is no longer there so um the third stage is metabolic flexibility which means you're fat adapted or keto adapted this phase um actually you're there you can typically switch back and forth from ketosis to using carbohydrates for energy 
fairly easily. Uh, some people really don't ever get to this phase, but that's your goal, right? So if you decide that you need to have something that's a little different or you wanna splurge a little bit, maybe go to a birthday party or just have something with rice in it or something like that, being in a metabolic flexible state will help you with that because if you do eat something that has a little more carbs than you're used to, once those carbs are burned off, you should go right back into a state of ketosis. If you do not, or if you struggle with that, again, I would recommend using the ketone salts that I talked about earlier so that you can help your body get back into a state of ketosis without losing days or weeks to um, get there. And that's the problem with the ketogenic lifestyle is if you do cheat, if you have something that's high in carbs, sometimes it's difficult for specific certain people to get back into a state of ketosis. And some people struggle more than others. So just throwing that out there. So um, you can practice intermittent fasting daily. And like I said, it's easier to focus on the nutrient value of foods instead of feeding your monster, feeding your cookie monster. So don't feed the cookie monster, feed your cells, feed your body with nutrition. So basically that's the thing. I actually have a blog post I did on this. You can search um, askdrannette.com to read the entire blog. I'm also gonna load this video on that page. And if you have any questions, let me know. I'm happy to help. Uh, I don't really know at this point what else to say other than ketogenic lifestyle is amazing. It's done amazing things for me. It's done amazing things for, for my family. I've seen people slim down, trim down. My energy level has changed drastically over the last three years. And actually, it changed in the first week. But like I said, I skipped phase one and went right into phase two because I have the ability to do that. But being in a state of ketosis has literally changed my life because I had no energy before. I wasn't able to do the things I wanted to do. And now I do whatever I want, anytime I want to. And I'm not plagued with fatigue. I don't feel like laying on the couch. As a matter of fact, I told my husband this morning that um, I've never laid on the couch that we own right now, not one time. I've sat on it a couple of times, but I've never laid on it. So that is a testament to how amazing I feel. And I love to help other people feel amazing. So if you have any questions or would like information about how to feel amazing, talk to me about getting into a state of ketosis in less than 60 minutes. Or if you'd like to, you can do it the hard way. The tips and tricks that I commented above in this video are usable by anyone who's doing a state of ketosis, whether or not they choose to supplement and um, get there quicker. So thanks for watching. Again, I'm Dr. Annette, and I love to help people just like you feel amazing and have the energy to do the things they love to do with the people they love to do it with and get you to a thinner, more energized, better you as soon as possible. Have a great week.